What's up guys, welcome to yet another video. This time we're going to be analyzing game one of Nieb versus Oliveira at the group stage at the IM Katowice 2023. Now, this is a particularly important game in my opinion and stick around until the end of the video if you want to find out particularly why. But chances are, if you actually follow StarCraft, you probably know that Oliveira has been crowned the world champion at this very tournament. And that is the craziest miracle run story, especially because of the way he did it. So the, the, the way things unfolded in the group stage into him becoming the world champion, it's really unfathomable. And we're going to analyze this game in particular. And at the end, I'll give you my closing thoughts. So let's dive into this as Oliveira already starts with the gas first, which is a more unusual build. People usually opt to go for a barracks before gas in TVP. And this will allow him, of course, to get a much faster factory, um, which is uh, in general just a, a bit more aggressive than usual. Neeb, on the other hand, is not opting to do anything too crazy. Just one gas with a normal gateway scout. So nothing too crazy out of either people. Uh, just Oliveira playing a bit more aggressive style. Um, but yeah, what I think is really interesting about coming into this series though, is that Oliveira was already down, uh, or I believe he was 1-1 in his group stage. So this was a pretty crucial moment to try and take the lead. Uh, so he, he's, he's really diving into this with all of the TVP preparation he's had so far, right? Uh, as Neeb was the only Protoss in his group. But so far, it, things are going pretty standard. Uh, Oliveira, of course, going for the Reapers. Uh, the reason you don't go for Marine here is because if you go for the Marine, you're just going to pull way too much gas and your CC is going to be awkward. Uh, uh, it's going to be at an awkward timing where it's just blocking you from making you your factory. Um, but yeah, in this case, Oliveira is scouting for proxies because as you go gas first without an SCV scout, you are vulnerable to uh, proxy gateways, most specifically. But one thing he's not going to notice is this actual Stargate that Nib opted to do. This is not a one base Stargate, so it's not super committed, uh, which means Nib is probably going to opt to go for oracles out of this Stargate. This is uh, especially relevant because you know that Nib will probably do a tech switch after the first couple of oracles, and he's probably going to be either Blink or Robo. So he does spot the Reaper. Adept will go cross map, but it will be a bit too late to delay the CC. Meanwhile, Oliveira just doing the anti-Adept build, which is two Marines and a Helen, which should be able to handle it promptly, but not without losing an SCV in the process. Of course, on this side, he's going to try to get some probe kills, but it's going to be extremely unsuccessful as he doesn't get a single kill. And mo worst of all, he doesn't even get a scout off into Neeb's main, so he has no idea of what's coming. He doesn't even know that Neeb has no tech in his main. All he knows is there's a pylon in the natural. And that tells him absolutely nothing. But fortunately for him, he actually ends up going a, uh, for a unit that's really good up against Proxy Stargate which is a Cyclone. I'm not sure what exactly prompted him to do this, uh, besides the fact maybe that Neeb is an extremely uh, notable Stargate player. I mean, he really loves his Stargate and TVP, uh, but that's the only thing I can imagine that would prompt him to do so. It does feel like a little bit of a blind counter by Oliveira, but it's still a good start for Neeb, getting two SCVs and a Mule. Uh, it's, it's basically free, right? But in this case, Nib really messes up by losing one Oracle to the Cyclone. He almost killed it. It re really was the only thing he could have done. I don't think he could have gone away with that Oracle. So I guess more than a mistake is really just unfortunate, right, for Nib. Um, there's not much way he could have avoided that outcome. And Oliveira already preparing for the correct... Uh, the correct play here which is to counter push he even makes a, a liberator which is a unit that's capable of breaking through shield batteries so even if he pushes into a shield battery he can out to dps the overcharge so very important unit in the absence of tanks you need that big damage dealer with a lot of sp sp uh, burst damage 
He is in position with these stalkers, but he will lose an adept. And the shoot battery just isn't quite done yet. That means he's gonna lose an oracle and a couple of stalkers. Overcharge is there, but like I said, the overcharge is not enough to deal with the burst damage of the liberator. So really Neeb is quite in a pickle. But one thing he's been really good throughout all of this is continuously making probes. You see he's not panicking, he's still making probes non-stop. And he has three gateways, so with a couple of warp ins, he should be able to hold, to fend this off. The important thing is to not overreact in the defense. As he does continue his micro with the stalkers, he does lose two. So Oliver is really being quite efficient with this uh, with this push. As you can see, 2,000 resources lost versus 900. Um, but yeah, re really, really setting the early game advantage in his favor. Now, here's why I think Oliveira is kind of dropping the ball. First of all, ideally, I think the best follow-up would have been 3cc. And that's because this barracks is... Uh, it's gonna take a while to finish, right? So he's he's going he's opting for fourth and fifth barracks, but what's gonna happen is he's gonna try a push sometime around when Stim finishes, and by the time he starts this push, he's not gonna have made a single unit out of these extra barracks. So the only the only purpose they serve is to pump units against a possible counterattack of Nib, but they're not gonna help with his push at all. And now he's going to start his third CC, but this could have been almost done already if he opted to do this extra third CC before the extra barracks. But all in all, still, a, it's a pretty good position for Oliveira. If you look at the units lost, that it actually evened up after he lost all of his units. Um, and Neeb was pretty consistent in his uh, worker production. So he's actually pretty okay economically. And I think he's doing all the right moves. For example, going for charge instead of blink. Absolutely must have upgrades to hold the push. He's also getting immortals and a bunch of extra gateways. He even cut probes because he's playing extra safe. He knows um, that Oliveira was pretty committed into that push. So I, I really like Neeb's setup here. And Oliveira, of course, there's only one thing for him to do, which is to push into Neeb right if he just tries to play the long game well technically he could because he does see there's no gases at the third so he knows neeb is not super committed into technology but knowing Oliveira, he is the aggressive player he is going to attack and here's the most important thing of all neeb spots this he already set up his counter attacks he has zealous is going to run by into the natural zealous they're going to drop in the main this is absolutely going to decimate Oliveira's economy even with reinforcements, this is going to be an extremely tricky hold. And he knows this push is coming. So the most important thing is for him to hold this push. Here's the first mistake I see Neeb do already, is he's already kind of out of position. With three force fields, he could have cut this army in half and maybe delayed this push substantially, without allowing Oliveira to really siege on top of his bases. Normally with tanks, you want to avoid the guy getting a free pass all the way to your base because then this happens. You, you just siege on top of your nexus and you're taking free shots, forcing overcharges, and it's just not ideal for him. Second mistake by Neeb in this case. He also forgot his units in the main. And this is where not having an F2 button actually can bite you in the ass. These units could have been helping defending this push. And you can see by Neeb's supply is he should be comfortably defending this, even with an upgrade disadvantage. And I think with this Colossus, he should be able to defend this easily. As we can see how things unfold. He is going to try to go for a desperate push, but the Colossus is out of position. His units are separated. The units in the main are only now beginning to uh, walk down from the main. And, and, and it really feels like, it felt like a big throw from Neeb. And even if he hadn't forgotten these units in the main, and he still felt that he couldn't thwart this push, another very reasonable alternative for him would have been to simply evacuate the sturds. You see this push coming, you're not confident you can hold it. Just take all of your probes, transfer them to the other sturd, Start the Nexus, you know, hold in front of your natural. You have a shield battery there that you can overcharge. Your Colossus are coming out. Range is on the way, so time is really on Neeb's side. 
And if you look at Oliveira's side on the map, he's at 39 SCVs and Zealots are still wrecking havoc on his mineral line. Um, he doesn't have an orbital at his third, which means that the orbital is not pulling any energy to uh, Mule Hammer after he defends the Zealots. So there's really only two orbitals that are going to be pumping mules. And Neeb also has the option of warping in more zealots through this warp prism. And because he's going to evacuate, if, if he evacuates this third, he can just comfortably sit in front of his natural, right? Maybe he can afford a, an extra set of warp in through his warp prism. So I feel like Neeb was really uh, pushed into a corner where, a decision where his decision making was not a as good as it should have been. Uh, which ended up him to taking like these this really poor fight just taking free shots from the tanks he was really pressured by this he does warp in an extra zealot like i said this that was, would have been good but maybe just evacuate this third and most importantly don't forget these units in your main because these really would have helped in holding this push and that ladies and gentlemen is why i think neeb should have won this game which would have led him to winning the series 2-0 and let me tell you why this is important this is the final results of the group stage for the um for this series right so Oliveira advances from the group in third place with a 6-6 map score while Neeb eliminated in fourth place with a 6-7 if Neeb had won this map and beat and proceeded to beat Oliveira in a 2-0 uh which he he beat him in a 2-1 and where it should have been a 2-0 which is my argument that would have been a 6-6 score for Neeb leaving him tied or not even tied because Oliveira would be 5-6 and six in maps and Neeb would have advanced over the actual world champion and it's kind of crazy to think how all of this led to Oliveira becoming the world champion because really it, it advancing with a 2-3 score into making such a miracle run I think makes it all the more special in Oliveira's case so I, I think it's really cool that it happened I'm glad it happened because although I love Neeb I'm not sure if he was capable of pulling off the same miracle run but we might have seen a completely different tournament if Neeb just hadn't made these small mistakes that cost him a 30 supply advantage game so yeah those are my final thoughts. I hope you guys enjoyed this analysis and this video. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you next time.